today we're going to be talking about how I encountered King Payman. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Luna Lyons. I'm a psychic medium, a near-death experiencer, and a demonologist. This is a video of my story on how I encountered the demonic King Payman. This is also a very difficult story for me to open up about because I had decided to not talk about it on my channel, but I have recently felt that this will give me more power uh, within myself to remember that this story is important to share because it will help empower other people and also feel validated if they had a similar experience, if not with payment or another demon or a devil entity. As a psychic medium, it's my personal duty to continue to meditate and focus on positive vibrations that are always surrounding me, that are always within me from the universe. But it's undeniable that there's going to be times where I have curiosity. And even curiosity can <laughs> be a huge eye-opener. This happened about a year ago. Um, when I first met King Payman, for sure. And when it came down to meeting this entity, it was based on my personal decision to encounter him intentionally. I know a lot of you may be thinking that have been watching me for a while going, whoa, 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 why would you do that? I encountered him because I wanted to really know for sure if he really was as evil as uh, movies portray him, if he's as evil as other people talk about him, and books, and uh, even the Goesha of uh, the Lesser Key of Solomon. So there's a lot of information about him, but I really wanted to learn from my experience, from my own testimony of what he was really like. When it came to meeting him, it was not planned. It was suddenly a struck of curiosity that I just felt I had to do it. It was after I did the movie review of the Hereditary film. I do not like that movie for many reasons, uh, but it was a good film, but it definitely was a really screwed up movie. But aside from that, I had never heard of King Payment until that film. And a lot of you guys had been asking me for quite some time to review that film and whether or not it was based on any truths of the paranormal, whether or not King Payman was real. So I reluctantly did my best to do the movie review, um, but I did not want to do it because intuitively I knew there was something very dark and sinister involving that film. And now I have no issue watching paranormal movies. I love the Conjuring series. I love a lot of other films. Um, I'm not against paranormal films. I'm not against demonic films for entertainment or for education. Uh, what I'm against is glorifying them in a way that gives them more power. And there's certain films that do do that. In a way, uh, Hereditary didn't do that. It still showed the dark, sinister realities of King Payman. Uh, but there's a lot of things about King Payment from the film that aren't true. In fact, one of the things is it, he does not require a sacrifice to summon him. So that is just Hollywood. They twisted the story about him. That's not true at all. He actually surprisingly does not require a sacrifice. Does he prefer it? Does he like that? Yeah, uh, but you don't have to, to worship him. Now, even in this moment, Archangel Michael is very close with me and many other benevolent souls and they even spoke to me earlier and they were even asking how are you going to feel about doing this today and they've been very kind to me and it helps me feel better and less uh, reluctant to talk about this and I know you're probably thinking just get to the story but this is the story and I don't want to rush this I want to be honest and genuine as much as possible and really give you the details that you deserve. And in my book, Demon Dealer, 
that's my personal autobiography of my near-death experience, how I became a demonologist, and why I am pursuing demonology in hopes to help people for free. And in that book, I do talk about King Payment. Now, there's a lot of entities in that book that I haven't mentioned on my channel, including King Payment. But I felt at this point, it's it's my favorite story and it's my least favorite story at the same time. There's there's reasons for that. I know you're probably even wondering, how is that your favorite? It's, it's a demon, how is that your favorite? There is reasons. So it was last year and at one point I just felt when I astral projected, I suddenly decided I just had to do it. So one of my guides uh, specifically was I, totally against it, um, but I wanted to do it because I just felt it's, it's the only way that I'm willing to know if it's real. I just had to see it. And this is the hard part, is even though I'm a psychic medium, and even though I'm a demonologist, and I've seen plenty of horrible experiences, I really wanted to know if this one was real. And yes, a lot of it attracted me based on how he's kind of Ara Arabian almost, and he's from, uh, it almost seems like Egyptian and ancient Arabia. Uh, the way with all the silks and the jewelry and the camel, it just seemed like a, a sexy idea. Now, I wasn't hypnotized. I was not looking to make a deal with him. I was not in that interest at all. I was not looking for um, the idea that um, he's going to suddenly be the only positive demon that I could trust or some nonsense like that, that someone's going to jump up and say. It's nothing like that. I was intrigued of what he seemed, and I was interested in learning about him. I don't know why I was just drawn to him. And I've noticed that, you know, when people say that phrase of mind demons, uh, I hate that phrase a lot, but nowadays I understand why people use that phrase because there are times where I still feel like uh, I deal with my demons, which would be one like Payman, because he still comes back ever since. It, it, he comes back frequently. Uh, but I refuse at the same time to own that or to say that he's mine or anything like that because that's how you remain attached. So you have to be aware of the dialogue you're telling yourself so you're not always attached to that entity. It's very, very important that you stay consciously, psychically aware of what you're telling yourself. And so in this moment, I decided to, to do this summoning session where I, on the astral realm, decided to summon him. And I described this in my book, Demon Dealer. And what I did was I, poof, manifested a book right in my hands and it showed me all of the ways to summon King Payment. And there are things about him that are intriguing but scary at the same time. And one of the things is if you, uh, you have to chant a certain phrase and you also have to uh, do it in the right way um, because if you don't do it in the right way uh, when he does appear and you talk to him without doing certain things first he will immediately scream this very loud blood curdling unbelievable scream and it's like a banshee but worse okay it's the worst sound you could ever hear and i've heard this sound before and it's uh, several times and that's one of his most powerful weapons on those other realms to uh, basically dismantle people's disarm people dismantle souls and to make them fall literally to the floor in utter agony because even though you don't have a physical body we still hear things we still feel things we still feel texture we actually feel and see and sense way more than we ever do here. Literally everything we sense here is like 10% of what we actually experience on the other realms. So it is a legitimate thing. And when I experienced this, cause I didn't do it right. And he started doing that scream. It was unbelievably painful. I actually felt like my own eardrums physical eardrums during my sleep were just suddenly going to just pop. I thought I was going to lose my own senses. It almost felt like it was going to make my brain explode. It was that painful. 
So in that experience, when we did it, when I, I mean me, when I did it and my guide was there, he was completely against it, but he didn't want to leave me alone. Um, that was when all of a sudden, uh, when payment came through this portal and I'm kind of skipping around, but he walked through a portal, a giant portal. And that's the reason why on my book, Demon Dealer, I have a portal with me standing in front of a hell portal, because that's exactly what demons do. They do come through a portal that is all of flame. Kid you not, not shitting you. They come through a portal of flame and it's honestly blows my fucking mind every time when I am reminded of that. The, the flames spark out, they jump out debris. The way they come out is very gradual, very, very clean and crisp. They just come right out of that portal. And when he came through, he came through also accompanied by two demons. I can't remember their names right now, but I had all that information in my book. I'm horrible at names with all these demons, I admit. Uh, there's so much information. So it takes a lot of study to really remember them. But these two demons were there with him and a lot of you guys have asked me, does King Payman actually ride a dromedary or a camel? And the answer is yes. He absolutely does. And this camel has bloodshot eyes, uh, very red. Here's the reality though. When Payman first arrived, he looked kind of grotesque and creepy and I thought, oh my god, what did I just get myself into? And I went, okay, just play cool, play cool. So I decided to do what I could when I met him. After I did what was required, he then changed his whole appearance magically before my eyes and suddenly from this ugly dead looking guy, all of a sudden he was the most beautiful man I'd ever seen in my life. One of one of the most. I've seen many others. Um, especially like Archangel Michael. Even Lucifer is absolutely gorgeous. There are many, many beings that are beautiful, even female beings that are beautiful. So but the thing is is that demons do not look beautiful, okay? This was an illusion, okay? This was all fake. But it took me this experience to understand the power of demons and how they influence and make people follow them. This is why so many people that are demonology practitioners, people that practice demon worshiping, summoning, uh, Satanists that worship demons, uh, and many other Luciferians that worship demons or devils or even Lucifer or Satan. The biggest uh, mistake that a lot of these innocent bystander people don't realize is that these entities do not look human at all, okay? That is a complete mirage. That's really what it was. He was this most beautiful, sexy, Oh my God, the smell. I mean, he just smelled so delicious. He smelled so good. His skin, I mean, every single inch of him was like, I hate to say it this way, but every single part of him screamed sex. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but that's how he baited me, okay? And that's what he did, because he knew I've been single for a long time, he knew I've been abused. He also knew that I was a survivor of sexual abuse. He also, the thing is it's about demons, you don't have to tell them shit. They read you the second they see you, the second they're in your vicinity, they know everything about you. They know everything about your entire life. They know everything about you. So I didn't have to tell him anything about me. He knew everything about me. But when I met him, he allowed me to have conversations with him. He allowed me to sit down and talk to him. And there were times where he made me feel very special. He made me feel uh, beautiful. He made me feel sexy. He made me feel uh, unique and uh, desirable and powerful. There were all, he really was feeding my insecurities and my ego. But now, does this suddenly mean that uh, I was a fool immediately? No, I was still 
uh, on guard quite a bit and I knew I was dealing with a very 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 powerful entity some some being that has been alive for aeons and aeons and aeons and there's no way that I could ever fool him or outsmart him because even with high respect to him, even as a demon, he's very, very, very good at what he does. And that's the one thing that did intrigue me and still does. And that's the one positive thing that I will say. I mean, this is the truth is when you're a demonologist, at least for me, you see the darkest realities of things. You see the worst hells you could ever experience. But sometimes there is that one little speck of beauty inside that hell. And that's that's how you survive hell. That's the truth. And that's how you try to find the light in the darkness. And one thing that I learned when I was even being tortured by Payman in many instances, but what he did was he made me believe all these things but that wasn't the light that i saw in him what i saw was his intelligence i was attracted to his knowledge i was attracted to his wisdom uh even as a demon or as devils they have much wisdom much experience much knowledge much 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 many 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 years of all kinds of experiences that they could sit down and tell you and you would still not be able to process even a, a speck of what they've experienced but as powerful beings as they are they're still very very negative and very very evil and payment is no exception under any fucking circumstances. I do not apologize for that statement and more importantly I am not spreading lies about this entity. He is one of the most evil fucking spirits you could ever encounter ever in your life. I started to uh, think that maybe he was judged harshly and there were even times where I wanted to believe that he could be positive. But even the truth is is when he was around me his energy constantly drained me unbelievably bad. There were times where I would have massive head pains, I would feel very nauseous, uh, I would have all kinds of nightmares, constant, constant nightmares. And there was a time where he had taken me to a so-called palace, but what I didn't know was that he had trapped my soul, even physically alive, I did not know this was possible. But what I learned was that what he did was he at some point made me so immersed in him and he made me really believe that he was positive that at one point he even whispered in my ear. Now this is where this is a lot like what the demons are portrayed as, as tempters. And this is very true even based on the biblical concepts, but there's not just the Bible that talks about this, there are other religions. I believe even Hinduism talks about this. Uh, but the, the fact is, when he was doing this, I can still hear the whispers of his voice and the way he spoke. I can still hear the sound. And it was like ASMR. It was like every texture of his tongue, his mouth, it was sexual, it was gratifying, it was... But as he spoke, I could literally feel his whole, like, energy start touching me and caressing my body, but not my physical body. He wasn't physically touching me, but somehow the vibration of his voice began to vibrate, like, uh, massage me soulfully in a way I've never experienced before. And this really got me to the point where I couldn't resist. It was unbelievably powerful because he really put on the most powerful temptation he could ever do. And, and in that moment, that's when I said I would be with him. And that was a difficult thing for me to accept. I don't think that I'm stupid though. I mean, it was hard, it was difficult. Um, but I learned so much from this experience that I want to bestow that knowledge to you to save you from a, a horrible mistake. When I did that, all of a sudden he took me to this other realm and this was all in sleep state, okay? And when I was in that position, I was suddenly manifested, I went dark and then suddenly I was in this whole other place. But when I was there, I 
woke up and found myself in what looked like a palace like this almost like aladdin's palace it was absolutely gorgeous from every single detail the the fabrics the pillows the blankets the linen the smell it smelled like flowers and there was so much goodness and pleasure in this realm and i didn't realize that everything that i was seeing was all an illusion it was all fake i was literally blinded my eyes could not see the truth because what he did was eventually when he came up to me he actually put this necklace around my neck and it was beautiful it was absolutely gorgeous but what i didn't know and my guides and angels had to rescue me from this situation what i didn't know was that this this uh this what appeared to be a necklace was actually a chain around my neck it was like a leash like a dog collar and that's how he kept me in control so in fact when i would wake up from these dreams and i would see him several times every day and in nights i was sleeping i would be back in the same place and it was very bizarre it was really really surreal um and i would have hot flashes like crazy uh to the point where i couldn't even stand being hot it, it would actually be uncomfortably burning it would hurt I feel like I was on fire and that's never happened to me before I mean I have hot flashes but I've never had it to that degree and when I saw the truth of what he had done there was so much pain to be healed from because at some points um, I tried to fight him I didn't want to be there anymore there were times uh, that I did have intercourse with him uh, several times and there were times when it seemed like it was fine and then th but then again I would be back to being in a lot of pain and then there were times where I would be with him and the worst experience ever was when I was in this realm and I gave myself to him because he, he had this anger of saying that that was what I had to do and I would fear him at that point and so I said okay and when we lay together and were sexual together um, at some points I lost all consciousness of myself and he, what I learned was that when demons have sex with humans they are actually draining your energy so violently and when you're mending with a devil or a demon entity in this way a real demon when you're actually having sex not a succubus or incubus is different there is a difference with incubus and succubus i i will be honest about that because i've been attacked and i've had intercourse i've been raped even by incubus before but i've never had it to this level and i do feel in a lot of ways it's because of how far and how evil uh king payman is and he prefers to be called king payman uh preferably because of his status in hell because of the hierarchy level of how close he is to uh satan in levels of power authority and notoriety and when it comes to even uh legions of how many demons he actually is in control of and they're always getting higher and they're always growing so and this is something that um is always something that a lot of people have a hard time with is understanding that demons are not always going to be the same uh, amount of legions uh, as the books say it's always adapting and changing because they can even be demoted they can be ascended uh, they could even uh, lose all their power and have to start back up again and have to ascend again in their authority and when I say send I don't mean positive vibration I mean in their ego their power and earning their their place in hell and hell does exist and I will make a video on that, um, but it's it's a very dark, horrible place. And I know that I said in my other videos that hell doesn't exist. Um, and that's another difficult thing for me to, to accept is, again, I, I feel it's, it's my responsibility to say, yes, it does exist and it's the worst place you could ever go. And y you're never the same.
after that. You're never the same again. There's something deep inside of you that changes and it makes you see the darkest parts of yourself that you never thought were possible. But there's also a chance when you overcome that, that you realize there's also a light in you that you never thought possible to escape it. And that's the, that's the reality that I've grown from. But with Payman, getting back to Payman, this was definitely an experience that um, taught me so much. I mean, a lot of people still to this day think I'm lying. I get a lot of trolls and a lot of hate. Um, but frankly, I don't give a damn what anyone says because the reality is this is my experience. This is what happened and I learned it from personal experience. So I'm not saying this because I read a bunch of books. I'm saying this. I mean, yeah, I read a lot of books, but I'm saying this because I experienced it. And when you experience something that's so profound and so powerful and so negative, it it, it makes you feel like it, it's your job to warn people. And that's where I'm at in my life is it's my job to warn people and to stay alert and cautious, greatly cautious on who you choose to worship or summon. Uh, based on entities in regards to that. When I was involved with Payman, there were even times where I had felt intimately like we blended and he was so powerful. And I, I did love that power, but it went immediately negative, so unbelievably negative that all I could see was all the hell he did to other people. This was probably one of the most horrific experiences because I was seeing what he did to human souls, children, babies, and to other beings, but mostly humans. Uh, he does allow torture of human souls in hell he encourages it, um, but he also uh, is very adamant that if you worship him, you do everything that you are told and you don't question him ever. He's not against you having your own opinion, but, he, but when you make a commitment to him as a god entity that you wish to worship or as a demon or a devil, whatever you view him as, this is really, really big. This is a big deal. The other thing that was quite interesting was he, at some point when I was with him, he was summoned by Satan and other demons came into this room and they had this uh, like armor on. Armor I've never seen before. And what I didn't understand at the time was that these demons were like basically soldier demons and these demons had very specialized weapons and very 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 powerful abilities i mean over overwhelmingly powerful in fact the only way i was able to finally escape when i was being rescued by angels even Archangel Michael and many other angels. It took a lot of angels to get me out. That was one way that I was in hell. So a lot of you guys have asked me, how did you get yourself in hell? How did you get in hell? I've actually been in hell, I believe twice. And when it came to King Payman, that was the very first time. And uh, it was not for very long, thankfully. They basically took me out I was rescued uh, quite quickly, uh, but I still felt like when I was in hell, even though my soul, my body, even though my body was always here, my soul was somewhere else. And don't get me wrong, when I was making videos, working, I'm still the same person. I wasn't possessed, there's a difference. I was basically a soul slave, but here's the, the crazy part about it, okay? On earth, a few minutes when I was in hell, like when I think about it out loud, I'm like, okay, how long was I there? And when I was in hell, I felt like, and the memories I have when I was under the rule of King Payman as one of his slaves, I, 
guys, I'm just going to say it, it, it literally felt like I was in there for a few years. It didn't feel the same time. The time frame in, in those realms is very different. And that's one of the reasons why torture in hell is so prevalent. It's so unbearable because it will go so slow. So you're literally in this moment where you can't bear it. But the thing was, is I was actually quite lucky in a lot of ways with payment because I wasn't being tortured on a daily basis like a lot of souls are in hell now. And that's the light that I saw in that situation was it could have been a lot worse. But was I in hell again? after that yes and that is a whole other story that i will share in another video eventually i admit i am not okay with talking about it it was very difficult to overcome and i'm haunted by it every day it's um it changes you you you're not the same after that with payment it was difficult but there was also a lot of um positives because he treated me differently he was kind to me as long as i was his slave he was kind to me but i never was in a good situation at that point either because i didn't have free will i was basically brainwashed i was not in a good place and he drained my energy on such a level that it nearly put me in the hospital because I was not feeling well at some points. But thankfully when um, after that residual uh, ended, even though it was only for one night, the residual damage was difficult to heal from. It took a long time. And I'm okay after that. Um, that's why I feel comfortable in this moment to share my story about how I met King Payman. But uh, do I regret it? The truth is yes and no when it comes to payment because he was he was a, a very unique experience. Uh, there are times when he's charming uh, when he's around. I'll be honest with you there. But that's not because I like demons, okay? Please don't ever think for a minute I'm saying suddenly that I worship payment. I do not absolutely, unequivocally, no. And I kick his ass out every time when he tries to show up. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very heavily guarded by Archangel Michael and other spirits because he does try to come back. And that's the other thing is when you make an attachment like that with a devil of that level or any devil or demon at all, the attachment becomes so, so strong that it's very difficult to cut it. And then once it's cut, that makes it difficult to not want to go back. There's always that residual feeling of wanting to go back. It, it It's like a haunting experience. You start thinking, well, maybe it wasn't so bad, but then you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have to always, it's constant dialogue to remind yourself why it was bad. So, and I suffer from that. I will admit that there are times, even still to this day, where I start to miss King Payment. And I want you guys to understand, this is not easy for me to say out loud, especially to you, to my audience on camera, because I know that this is going to sound so, so twisted to a lot of people. But one of the things that I want to highlight that will give you an insight to this is this is not a genuine feeling of mine. This is based on his brainwashing ability to make me convinced that he was positive. That's what demons do, especially demons of his level. And it's no different than abusers. When a person that is heavily physically, sexually, or verbally, emotionally, mentally abused by a spouse, and then you see that they are finally away from that abuser, but then they still miss them and they keep going back and then you wonder why? This is why. It's because 
the brainwash system and because it's so impacting it makes it hard to unlearn and to relearn what that entity did or what that person did so it's a lot like that and this is where my guides regularly talk to me so it's like therapy and they're so amazing to me because they never judge me and they always help me even joshua jesus Yehoshua, he'll say, are you missing payment? I said, yeah. And he'll say, what do you miss? And I'll say this and this and this. And he'll go, okay, but you know, and he'll remind me. And I know, I know. He will help me to distract me. And this is a therapy that I need. So that way I never ever go back to that situation because I know it's unhealthy. I know it's negative. I know it's evil and I know it's wrong and I know it's toxic. And it's the same with abusive relationships for people. Now for me, which is ironic, if someone is abusive towards me physically of a human, I will never go back ever. Uh, bye. I would never go back with a person who physically abuses me or anything like that because I know my self-worth, I know my standards and dignity and self-respect and my moral compass. And more importantly, I have a daughter whom I love more than anything. And I know that if a person were to hit me and be abusive, why would they not also do the same to my daughter? And that's a reality. With that in mind, the thing is, is the difference here with payment, however, is the reason why I want to always go back or what makes me miss him is his intellect, the way he talks. Um, he's very, very smart, exceedingly smart. He has so much information, it's, it's unbelievable. And they brag, they're really big about ego and pride and bragging. So that's not attractive at all. But what was always attractive in the moment when I was trapped in hell was how he spoke to me, whispered to me, how he was gentle to me. So he made me feel like he was a lover. But there were also times where he made me feel so beautiful. So like there was a moment where I looked into a mirror in his hellish <laughs> palace and when I was there, all of a sudden, um, he wasn't there at the time. I was waiting for him and I looked around and I was like, oh my God, everything's so real. And I remember looking at the objects and feeling the textures of the gold and the linen of everything. It was beautiful. Jewels, gold everywhere. Unbelievably real. I don't know how else to give it justice. It really was unbelievable. It was incredible. But that's how powerful his illusions are and that's what i'm attracted to or what i miss is the illusion okay i don't miss him i don't miss his treatment or his energy at all i miss the illusion because there were times when i was with him where i was dressed like like an arabian princess almost like jasmine from aladdin and that was one of my favorite movies as a kid it still is i don't like the remake though i'll be honest um but when it came to how i looked um it was just he changed my appearance like he amplified my beauty and I'm self-conscious of my scars and uh, and that's one reason why I wear makeup but I like makeup too I like to play with makeup um but you know when he did this I mean there was a moment where I cried because I had never seen myself so beautiful before and it was it was a gift that I still feel is something that I can treasure. I, I admit that that was something that helped me with self-love in a weird way. But this was the, the one thing that really highlighted for me um, my beauty or what my potential for beauty could be as far as um, internally, soulfully, or even physically. Um, it just made me feel so different and I do feel that in a lot of ways from this experience uh, From the hells that he's given me it made me so much stronger There were times where I had to fight payment by myself and how I got out of hell um, in that trap in that entrapment angels had to come and rescue me but I was in different levels of hell and I was trapped in a certain level of hell and it's it's almost like a tower inside um, 
not in ground, but it almost seems like that. It's really complicated. Hell is definitely one of the most complicated realms you could ever go. Um, Cause it's like a giant maze. It's very big and very confusing. And there's a lot in each level of hell. Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel and Raphael and a few other angels, uh, Metatron, they were able to uh, rescue me, but they had to let me borrow their power. And I had to fight the demons that were watching over me, basically keeping me in place. So I had to fight these demons. And when I fought them, uh, with the help of the angels, it was amazing. I felt like a super powerful woman. I felt so much power, so much love, so much positive energy. But the angels have to work together and they had to work together to help me. So like at one point when I would be working with the an one angel's power, then they had to have another angel take its place because the negativity in hell is so unbelievably bad that it would start penetrating into their energy frequency and they'd start feeling very negative and they had to stop to, and then another angel's energy would come into me and then I'd be replaced with that same energy. And then they had the other angel that was prior helping me that had to get out uh, of their energy, like borrowing. They had to recharge and reheal. Uh, superhumans, like they are, don't get me wrong, they're incredibly powerful and incredibly benevolent. And they have so much love and positive energy. But um, when you're surrounded by so much negativity on a different realm like that, it's even hard for angels. And that's why they always work in like a, a soldier kind of army. They have the angelic army. Um, they have soldiers in heaven to keep their realm safe. Uh, and to keep other ben benevolent beings there safe as well as even us people. You know, that was my experience and I was able to get out of hell and out of that experience and even Archangel Michael had to basically break with a very special angelic sword and break the uh, chain around my neck. And I didn't realize that that's what that necklace was, was it was a collar, it was a chain. And it was keeping me tied up and it was continually draining me. And whenever it was draining my energy, it would be given to payment wherever he was. And it was pretty, pretty bizarre, it was crazy. This is my testimony for my experience of what it was like meeting Payman. And the truth is, I still see him sometimes. He still comes to my home. He still tries to talk to me. There are times where he'll still try to get me to be back with him. Uh, but I tell him to fuck off every time when he shows up. I I'm gonna be real, that's what I do. Because I've ascended now because of a lot of the hells I've experienced. I've learned the power of love. I've learned the power of my God particle. And I've learned how to have faith in myself to fight them off. And I have fought Payman, basically whooped his ass several times on the Ashtal realm. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda proud of that. Because it was difficult to do, to overcome, and it was justice for me. And it's not ego. It's understanding that when you die, there's no one in control of you but you, okay? You don't have a God telling you what to do. That's not what happens in spirit. There are benevolent beings, there are many gods, but the only God you should ever worship or respect or love is you. You are the God particle, you are the God in the making. And this is what Jesus does describe in the Bible or in the Lost Gospel of St. Thomas that the Vatican adamantly denies. And the reason why is simple. It would take away the power of the church. It would take away the power of, of their ability to keep brainwashing people to think that they always need the church to make them saved or uh, powerful. But the truth is, you've always been powerful. You just need to be taught how to maintain that. You've always been powerful and you've always had that inner God power. That's actually why uh, pastors and priests are very good at expelling uh, demons and devils is because of the God particle. And when they call on to God, what they don't realize is they're actually calling on themselves. And with that amazing faith, 
That's why they're so successful. And this is what I'm teaching in my channel to enlighten you of your God particle to help you realize you had it in you all along. And even Jesus is adamant about this. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I am confident in sharing my story with you. I have conviction in my testimony because without that experience, I wouldn't have been able to experience my own power in overcoming the worst kinds. Aside from King Payman, there are many other demons and devils that I have met and that I've experienced. So if you are interested in learning about those experiences, I did write a few of those in my book, Demon Dealer. So this is my story based on King Payman and how I met him. And more importantly, I want to enlighten you and educate you on why you should never worship King Payman. I don't care who you are, what you believe, if you think that these demons are good and they have your best interest at heart, they don't. And I just hope that my story can give you more validation that if you've had any similar experiences, you're not crazy and you're not alone. So I just wish you guys love and light. Thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, or ideas, you know where to go. But if you're also interested in learning more about uh, demons and how to keep yourself safe, I have a book called Demons and Familiars at Contemporary Guided Demonology available on Amazon.com or at my website, lastfrontiermedium.com. But thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you guys love and light, and I'll see you next time.